Hey 12s, welcome in. The Seahawks are on the brink of free agency with that starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific. And I just kind of wanted to go through and talk about like where they're at, um, some of the moves that they've made recently, and then look at this roster and kind of see where they might be trying to add some pieces. Um, so let's jump in. I want to start by talking about what Tyler Lockett did. He took a pay cut, um, and it sounds like it's going to reduce his... Um, his cap hit in 2024 down to about 13 or 14 million dollars um which i mean thank you tyler lockett is pretty much the only conclusion to this um situation the seahawks could have cut him and um taken about 19 or really almost 20 dead um and so but instead they get to keep him on the roster for about 13 million dollars which i mean that's just fantastic I feel like people don't realize like Tyler Lockett back in 2021 signed a a four-year extension that gave him $17 million a year, but he hasn't really seen that money yet. And by taking this pay cut, he probably won't. Like he had a cap hit of $10 million in 2022, 11 in 2023, and now it looks like it's going to be $13 million for 2024. And, you know, like this he had that massive cap hit because the Seahawks kept restructuring his contract and so for him to go back and say oh never mind you don't have to pay me that money like you know props to Tyler Lockett um thank you <laughs> um yeah he's really not getting what he's worth like I he has played as a number one wide receiver and he's never been paid like a number one wide receiver um really not even a number two wide receiver if we're completely honest um, so thank you, Tyler Lockett. That gets the Seahawks to about $55 million um, is kind of what I'm guessing for cap space in 2024, um, which is just great, right? You know, cutting, cutting digs and cutting Jamal Adams. Those were, you know, necessary cuts. I think Belor and Disley are also kind of necessary cuts. Like they were kind of more the Pete Carroll type guys. Um, so, you know, with those guys out of the building, um, and all the cap space that this has created, I really do think the Seahawks are going to spend pretty big in free agency. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over, you know, what they might be looking for. Um, so here, I'm going to bring up the Seahawks rosters. Um, and we're just going to start on offense and look at where we need to, you know, fill some holes. So let's start at quarterback. Starting quarterback, I think that's locked down. Geno Smith is, you know... He is the starter for this year. I'm not opposed to drafting somebody in the draft if the right guy is there. But for, for this year, you know, starting quarterback, we are completely fine with Geno Smith. Um, so we're not going to be looking for a quarterback in free agency. If we are, that's going to be the backup quarterback. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to just waiting until the draft and seeing what happens there. But um, we'll see what where the Seahawks like to go there. Um, but quarterback is taken care of. We need to find a backup. That's not a huge concern. Um, wide receiver is completely taken care of. You know, bringing back Tyler Lockett. Like, again, we have one of the most stacked wide receiver rooms in the NFL. Um, so I'm happy there. I would be very surprised if the Seahawks spent money at wide receiver because I think we're, you know, four deep very comfortably. Um, same thing with running back. Like, you could argue we need an RB3. I think you would hope that Kenny McIntosh can step into that role. I know he didn't play much in 2023, um, but it seems like the Hawks staff really liked him. So I don't think that running back is really anywhere on the radar. Um, so let's get into the positions that I think need to be on the Seahawks radar. Um, starting with tight end, the Seahawks have no tight ends, or I think um, Tyler Mabry is under contract. Uh, let me check. Yes. Okay, Tyler Mabry is under contract. Um, that's not going to prevent you. I don't think you want him being anything more than maybe a tight end three. Um, so I think you need two starting tight ends. And I will be interested. Like, I am I would love to bring back Parkinson, but we'll see where that goes. Um, and then I think you need to find another tight end in free agency. Um, yeah, that, that that is a position of need for sure. I don't think it's the biggest position of need, but it's definitely a position of need. Um, and I think the Seahawks will probably address that at some point, maybe later, maybe in the draft. Um, maybe you bring back Parkinson early and then try to go draft a guy in the late rounds. Um, so small position of need because tight end really isn't a position that is, you know, a super valuable position. 
Um, but you still need to find some guys there. The offensive line is where this really gets interesting. I think there's a lot of holes here. Um, uh, left guard and right guard. I feel fine with Anthony Bradford being a backup. I don't want the guy starting. Um, PFF and just the eye test tell you he can't really pass protect. And if there's one thing the Seahawks need to improve in 2024, it is their pass protection. So I think he's a great backup. Um, I like what he's able to do in the run game, and I hope that he can develop into something. But I'm not going to just say, oh, yep, he's our starter at right guard. Like, that's not what we're going to be able to do. So we need a right guard, We and we need a left guard. So we have those two starting positions. At center, I think I'm fine with Olu Oluwatimi being the starter. Um, I think he's proven that he's good i think he's um you know he came in in a lot of you know roles and was fine i don't think that he's going to be some guy that like would prevent you from taking a center at any point like i'm still interested and intrigued by the free agent centers and centers in the draft class um but i think he's a fine option and i wouldn't be like you know, panicking if the seahawks were went into 2024 with him as their starting center um, but again, like you can see a lot of red on this chart. We need a left guard and a right guard and probably two backup interior pieces and a backup right tackle. Um, you know, the Seahawks only have Stone Forsyth. That's their only backup uh, swing tackle type. So I think there's realistically like five spots on this offensive line, two starting spots and three backup spots that like desperately need to be filled. Um, so I would look for the Hawks to make a move. I think they need to sign at least one guard in free agency um, and probably come up with, uh, you know, some backups as well. Um, so I think that guard, either left or right guard, could be a spot to watch out for for the Seahawks to make a move. Shifting over to the defense, um, you know, the Seahawks have a decent defensive line. It's not great. Um I think both edge spots are taken care of. Um, obviously, you could always upgrade, but like, it, again, this is how I'm grading this. If we go into 2024, I'm fine with Boye Mafe and Enchena and Wosu. Um, Derek Hall, you know, rough rookie season. I think he will be a pretty good, you know, number three edge. So I'm completely fine with him being the backup. Um, you need another, you know, an edge four, a depth piece. Um, I think that probably comes in the draft or maybe in some sort of late signing. So I don't know if that's a priority per se. Um, inside, Jaron Reed, he was a solid nose tackle. And Cam Young behind him was not that bad. So I think nose tackle is probably fine. Again, could you upgrade? Of course. But, you know, I would feel fine if Jaron Reed and Cam Young was our solution inside. Um, for defensive tackle, that's a very different story. Um, we have, you know, obviously, yes, we do have Draymond Jones and then Mike Morris behind him. Um, I really think you do want three guys here. So I would be looking to add there at defensive tackle. Um, of course, Leonard Williams is the obvious name. And um, I think the Hawks might be able to bring him back. I don't want them to overspend because they sent the second round pick. Like I think every Seahawks fan would tell you, yep, that was a mistake, but like you, you know, sunk cost, right? We can't go into this and be like, well, we spent a second round pick, so we got to bring him back. Like that, that can't be our, um, our rationale. We can't overpay because we already overpaid. That doesn't make any sense. Um, so I think you do need to bring in some sort of defensive tackle. You could wait until the draft, um, because I don't think it's a terrible spot. Um, but I do think that the Seahawks could be in on defensive tackle, whether that's Leonard Williams or someone else. Um, linebacker. The Seahawks have zero linebackers right now, basically. Um, no, actually, I mean, they, yeah, they did cut Belor. So, yeah, I don't think they have a single linebacker on the roster. Um, so you need linebacker. You need three of them, basically. Uh, and I don't know if you're bringing back, you know, we've gotten reports that maybe Wagner will not be back. He's going to explore the market. Um, so I think that linebacker is a position that the Seahawks need to look into early. Of course, Patrick Queen comes up. Um, I think that would be a good fit. Um, you know, the price tag is going to be a lot. It's going to be a ton of money for Patrick Queen. I think it might be worth it. And particularly if Mike McDonald thinks it's worth it, then like go for it. But um the Seahawks need linebackers. That's pretty evident. And, you know, they're going to need to find those guys pretty quickly. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if week one of free agency, the Seahawks find some sort of linebacker, just a starter. I also think Willie Gay would be a very interesting fit. Um, you know, really athletic and rangy guy from Kansas City. I think he could be ready to step into that, you know, LB1 starting linebacker role. Um, and I think those are the types of guys that you want to bet on, like the guys that are really young, um, but have some experience, um, you know, three, four years starting in the league or at least getting significant stabs, snaps. Um, but let's go back to free safety. We have Julian Love. I think that's pretty much covered. Strong safety is, you know, more of a question mark, right? We have no Jamal Adams. Um, really, Mike McDonald does like to run three safety looks. So you could even say that we need to find like two safeties. Um, so I think that's another hole. Um, Jeremy Chin would be a very fascinating fit. Um, you know, Simmons from the Broncos would also be an interesting fit. There's a lot of strong safeties. And fortunately for the Hawks, the safety market is kind of crashing. Um, Geno Stone is also another name that a lot of people are talking about. Um, so I think those are some guys that the Hawks could be interested in and just kind of a brief look at like the weaknesses of this roster as it stands. Um, for day one, I'm not really expecting the Hawks to make a move. You know, that would be like, I could see Patrick Queen being a day one type guy. Um, maybe like Xavier Worthy, or sorry, um, not Xavier Worthy, Xavier McKinney. If the Seahawks want to get that kind of superstar safety, um, maybe that could be the fit day one. Um, but don't be surprised if the Hawks are quiet day one. Um, I'm not going to be surprised if they're quiet day one. You know, John Schneider has talked about like, that's not really where you find the deals in free agency. That's usually where guys overpay. Um, and so I'm not going to be surprised if the Seahawks kind of sit back. They have a lot of money. Um, but there's going to be guys that are going to continue to be on the on the market. Um, and I think that you could really find some bargain signings like the Seahawks found in Julian Love last year. Um, so that's going to wrap it up. I'm really excited for free agency tomorrow. And I think that we're going to see the Hawks, you know, at some point in this free agency cycle, really make some splash moves and really round out this roster. You don't want to go into the draft with holes. Um, you at least want to have a decent answer. Um, so I'm going to be watching very anxiously and I will make a video on whoever the Hawks sign. Um, yeah, because I really want to get your guys' thoughts and really dive into the tape of whoever they end up with. So thank you so much for watching um, and I will see you, you know, shortly after free agency. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss anything that the Hawks do as I break down all of their moves in this free agency cycle. Um, I really appreciate all of the support, everyone. So to all the new subscribers um, and new commenters, I'm, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.